Good morning, beloved. Today our gospel, we pick up just right where we left off last week. And so we can just remember last week, Jesus, or Peter made the great proclamation of, about Jesus, um, that he is the Messiah of God, basically the Savior of the world. And then uh, so we pick up right there. And now Jesus is going to tell and explain to his disciples what that means, what kind of Messiah he is, or what kind of Savior he is. Basically that he is a suffering servant Messiah. And so he goes on to tell them, he's got to go, okay, we're going to Jerusalem, and when we get there, I'm going to suffer greatly from the elders, chief priests, the scribes, they're going to kill me, but they're all, on the third day, I'm also going to raise, be raised from the dead. Peter seems to kind of forget that last part, huh? The resurrection of the dead. Either, get over here, Jesus, let me talk to you for a little bit, huh? You know, remember, Peter is feeling good, right? Because... He, he has just proclaimed, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus has just confirmed for him, good job, Peter. That's the voice of my Heavenly Father speaking in you. You know, you're recognizing God's voice speaking. And so here's Peter now with another bright idea, huh? And he said, come here, Jesus, you know, let me talk to you a little bit. I got the voice of the Father speaking through me, huh? He said, God forbid that this should ever happen to you, that you would, that you would have to suffer greatly and be killed. You know, and, and Jesus right away, now he's continuing to teach Peter how to recognize the different voices speaking within him. He, said, he says, says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. Peter, that's not the voice of my father speaking in you. Peter, that is the voice of Satan speaking within you. Where, where else? Well, because... Remember at the very beginning, before, right before Jesus' public ministry, right before he comes out in power, he goes into the desert, right? And is tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. And one of the great, well, great temptations was basically to get Jesus to avoid the cross, you know? To, to avoid the cross and instead to gain everything by just simply kneeling down and worshiping Satan. So Jesus recognizes this voice or this temptation coming even through the words and mouth of Peter. He says a very important line here. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. So we've been talking about this in discipleship and lessons in discipleship. We've been talking about learning to, to say what Jesus says, to teach what Jesus teaches, and also to do the actions that Jesus does. Specifically praying for people for their for their healing, for their deliverance, for their life to be filled with peace, for if somebody has died to be raised from the dead, doing the same actions as Jesus. And now Jesus is taken to another level and saying, not only speak and teach what I speak and teach, not only do the actions that I do, but now I want you to think as God thinks. See, it's no longer acceptable for the disciple of Jesus to think merely as human beings do. You and I have to learn how to think as God thinks. More and more pressure from Jesus every day. You know, <laughs> we can't get along. Uh, can't we? Can't simply be merely humans anymore. We've got to actually let the divine power and divine life of God flow through us, changing our words, our actions, and even our thinking now. And so here, Jesus begins to teach us how to think as God thinks. Notice what's happening here. Human beings want to avoid the cross. Huh? So Jesus says, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to suffer greatly. I'm going to go through pain, suffering, and death. I'm going to have to carry the cross and then die on the cross. And Peter says, no, 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 let's not do that. <laughs> Human beings, are, our natural tendency, natural survival instinct is to avoid pain and suffering and death. To do whatever we have to do to survive. But Jesus is trying to make us transcend those natural human instincts so we have divine instincts now. To think as God thinks means to see pain and suffering and death now, not as human beings see it, but as God sees it. How does God look at pain and suffering and death in our life? Notice that God does not avoid, avoid pain, suffering, and death. Jesus says, when I get to Jerusalem, it's going to be pain, suffering, and death. The cross, we're going there. He goes right to, he's, and when it comes to pain and suffering and death in our life, Jesus says, pick it up like a cross. Embrace it like a cross and carry it. Deny yourself survival instincts. Right? Whoever wants to come after me must deny himself. Deny those self-survival instincts 
and instead pick up that cross, pick up that pain, pick up that suffering, embrace death for my sake, and follow me. Notice, see, Jesus, when he embraces the cross, he's doing it for you and for me. Huh. See, Jesus doesn't come to take away our suffering. He comes to transform it. You know? if we always want to pray, yeah, God, take away this pain and suffering. But if he doesn't, we have to know what to do with it. That, otherwise, it drives us crazy because we don't seem to have any meaning, any purpose in our life. But as long as God does allow pain and suffering in our life, then we have to respond to it the same way that Jesus does. So Jesus embraces it, the pain, the suffering, the death, the cross, and carries it for our sake. As, out of sacrificial love for you and for me. Jesus, we know, saves us by dying for us. Right? We are saved by his death and his resurrection. Jesus on the cross, his suffering becomes redemptive suffering. That means, you know, his suffering is the price for our salvation. And he invites us to come and to follow him and to allow our pain and our suffering and our death to also be the price of salvation or sanctification or healing in somebody else's life as well. This is where we get the old Catholic term, offer it up. <laughs> oh, you're, you're suffering right now? Well, just suck it up. You know, not just suck it up, it's actually offer it up. You know, talk, offer it up. When we offer something to God, that becomes a sacrifice. And anytime we are sacrificing and offering something to God, that's an act of worship. See, St. Paul gets it. That's why in the second reading, St. Paul says, offer your bodies up as a living sacrifice to God, holy and acceptable and pleasing to Him. He says, this is your spiritual act of worship. This is worship. You can worship God all day long if you're offering Him your life all day long. Here's my life, God. What do you want to do with it today? Here's my body. What do you want to do with it today? So, so to develop the mind of God when it comes to pain and suffering and death, we have to basically turn it into sacrificial prayer. So when you're suffering, when I'm suffering, then we say, okay, it's not, not just suffering, but now who am I going to suffer for? Who am I going to sacrifice this for? Who am I going to carry this cross for? Give it a name, give it a purpose, give it a person in your life. What am I going to carry this cross for? You see, now if I'm suffering, see, we, we, we suffer naturally already for each other and people we love, you know. Yeah, I'll do that for you. Yeah, I'll sacrifice that for you. Yeah, I'll give up all day Saturday so help you move, you know. Or yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do this for you. I'll do that for you. I'll sacrifice part of my life to help you. We do this all day long with our family, with our friends, with people we love. So Jesus is basically saying, you know, we don't go looking for more suffering and pain, you know. But there's all kinds of pain and suffering that comes in our life that we didn't ask for, that just comes. And we have to basically give it a name. Okay, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer this pain, this suffering, this death-like experience for this person because they need healing. For this person because they need conversion. Somebody comes up to you, somebody's mean to you, persecutes you, calls you names, is just a jerk to you. You know, well, Lord, I'm going to offer that jerk up for, to you. You know, I'm going to offer those, those hard experiences up for you. I'm going to offer them up to you for their salvation, you know. I'm actually going to turn that bad experience around against them or actually use it for them, for their conversion, for their salvation, for their freedom, for their healing. See, anytime we take that pain, that suffering, that death, we offer it up. Remember, it becomes a sacrifice. If I offer it up for somebody, that means I'm sacrificing for somebody. Anytime we're sacrificing, it becomes, we're, then, it be, you know, we're, we're loving when we sacrifice ourselves for somebody else, that's the greatest act of love. Right? Jesus said, no, no greater love has somebody that they would lay down their life for you. And so Jesus, when he says, you have to, to come after me, you have to deny yourself and take up that cross. He's saying, lay down your life for me. Love me. And so when we take up our cross, when we offer sacrifice for somebody else, we're, we're entering into sacrificial love for that person. It's one thing to pray for somebody. It's another thing to pray with sacrificial love for that person. You know, moms and dads know this a lot. Because all of a sudden now your life becomes invested in their life. 
because you're sacrificing for them. You're suffering for them. You're sucking it up for them. You're waking up at 3 in the morning to feed them, right? Or to change a diaper or just to be with them because they're sick. You're suffering. You're sacrificing for them. That's sacrificial love. No wonder prayer becomes all the more powerful when sacrifice is added to it. No wonder the church always says prayer is good, but prayer and fasting is better. Because when we're fasting, we're sacrificing. And when we're fasting for somebody else's healing or salvation or conversion, we're sacrificing for their healing, their salvation, their conversion. We're loving them with our life. When you add sacrifice to prayer, you add love to prayer. Now your prayer is powerful. This is why on Friday at the, at the day of the mass readings, Paul, he's talking about the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, the cross of Jesus Christ is the power of God. The power of God for salvation and for sanctification. So look, when Jesus is saying, take up your cross and follow me, he's saying, take up, pick up the power of God for salvation and sanctification. God has, when God gives you and me pain and suffering and death experiences, this, he's giving you the power of God to do something with it. We can change the world. We can change our lives. We can change people around us with the power of God. Or we can take the pain and suffering and when it comes and just complain. <laughs> what good does that do, huh? What change does that bring? Nothing. So see, when, so when God sees pain, suffering, and death, when, see, when humans see it, we complain and want to avoid it. When God sees it, he embraces it like a cross as, a, as an opportunity for a sacrificial love. He embraces it and says, let's offer this up for their salvation, their sanctification, for the healing that they need in their life. Think about the prayer, think about the pain, the suffering, the different experiences you're going through right now in your life, or your family's going through right now, you know, maybe even just wearing the dang masks every day, you know? It's a, it's a pain in the butt to wear these things sometimes, you know? That's something we can offer up as a sacrifice to God for something, for somebody. You know, are you offering up that little, even that uncomfortable experience for something and for somebody? Or just complaining, griping, moaning, and growing like the Israelites in the desert, you know. Think about all these different sufferings that just you naturally have already in your life. And who can you offer those up for? So that your prayer for them now is empowered by sacrificial love for them.